So how do I perceive policy in terms of uh, enabling a sustainable world? Well, I think it's got an incredibly important uh, role. It has a lot of challenges to overcome because we've seen uh, huge inaction on the policy front for many years. Uh, that comes from the, the, the limitations of the political systems in which uh, we, we operate. But nevertheless, from a, a business perspective, um, we know that, 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 that policymakers have to support scale up uh, of solutions. So in terms of certainly climate and energy, the issue of a global carbon price is absolutely essential and we need policymakers to uh, make that happen. So how can we enable policymakers to take action? Well, that's you know, the million euro question, uh, I think very important. Uh, certainly, I think it depends on the stakeholder group. So from a, a business organization perspective, I think that uh, what we need is to have progressive business leaders uh, actively engaging with policymakers to show them that, in fact, the business community, uh, which, which, which manages the economic system, supports strong action. And I think the social movement that we've seen around those business leaders, uh, I think led uh, largely by the World Business Council for Sustainable Development has been hugely impactful on that. We saw, I think, a lot of the success in uh, COP21 in Paris, uh, certainly because of uh, the, the, the policymakers themselves, and clearly the French uh, uh, negotiating team were outstanding, but there were also uh, 800 business leaders uh, in Paris supporting strong policy action, and I think that made, that made all the difference. So if the question was, has business superseded policymakers in the sustainability realm, I would say the answer to that is no. I think they have very different roles. I think they have to work together. Uh, and, uh, but what I do think is, is that business are uh, agents of action. So they're organizations, they're powerful, they, 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 they are the ones that do things. And uh, I think as long as that both business, progressive business here, and policymakers are being driven by the same science, so that's the th sort of the third pillar, uh, then they have the same goals, and they each have a different role to play, and, and indeed complement and support each other. So I think it's a good question of, of how can you ensure uh, compliance or that they're on the same uh, uh, page and, and that, that we're all doing what we think we're doing. Well, I think the first thing is to really be explicit about the science-based targets for action uh, with concrete time frames. So what needs to be done by 2020 to get us towards a safer place, safer place? Uh, what needs to be done by 2030 and then work out to, to 2050. And then I think, quite frankly, we need better measurement of performance at a systemic level. Now, now of course, firms have been measuring toxic release inventory, um, certain amounts of emissions, these sorts of things for a long time. But I think the systemic understanding of really where are we, what are the KPIs for the planet, that still needs work and I, and, and I think we need to have it or we don't know, in fact, if we're addressing the problems we need to. So the, the role of civil society is also important because, uh, and I would broaden that into also the role of consumers. So the role of citizens is key. Now, you know, the funny thing is, is that, uh, you know, if you talk to progressive business, it's not that their customers are saying, you have to half your CO2 emissions or we won't buy your product. So that would be Unilever's strategy. It's indeed the consumers, some of those consumers support that, but many of them have busy lives. They just have to make their life work well. So I think that there's this role of, of actually citizens to step up and vote for things. I think, I mean, I think personally Brexit is a very good example of where citizens have to come up and, and not say that the European Union is difficult because it has strong environmental policies, and we are seeing that in the UK right now, that kind of polemic. Whereas in fact that's the best part of, uh, or one of the best parts of being in the, the European Union, that indeed um, we do have strong uh, collective environmental uh, regulations and, and I think that's a good thing but but you know maybe Joe Citizen thinks oh that makes my life more complicated whereas in fact that's a short-term solution so I think citizens and civil society need to I think uh, uh, step up as well I think that universities uh, have a very important role to play as well because you know they, that's where science comes from so it's independent it's rigorous it's not about politics or money it is about uh, finding the truth as best we can. And, and I think that, that, that what we need to do, though, is get out of the ivory tower. And I'm a professor myself, so I'm a, a social scientist. 
we can't simply uh, publish our, our, our I I papers in, in peer-reviewed journals. We have to make sure that they're in a language that those actors, especially business, can understand. So universities have a, a key role to play because they know the emerging science, they know the safe boundaries for the planet, and they have to communicate that in a way that, that, that the actors that are affecting those boundaries understand. So less ivory tower, uh, I would say, more communication of science. So has there been progress? Uh, I think in terms of actually real world action, there has been insufficient progress. Yes, there have been some uh, um, aspects like uh, ozone uh, depletion that we have looked at and there has been action on that. Uh, perhaps it, it's less effective than we had thought at one time, but there has been action. But the whole suite of systemic Earth-based problems, there's insufficient action on that. But what gives me hope, and that's an important question when you work in doom and gloom, so to speak, uh, is that uh, coming out of Paris with COP21, many of us have been, that have been working on this for decades, we felt hope. We thought science is right in that agreement, the 1.5 aspirational target, which may be impossible to get to, but we know that it is the, the important one. That's science, and I think that to see world leaders, big business, civil society embracing that, that, that gives me hope. Yes.